Hi and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Megan and I've lived and worked from dozens of countries all around the world, but Da Nang is the one place that I always find myself going back to. In today's video, I'll be sharing my top 10 favorite things to do in and around Da Nang, Vietnam. First up on the list is the Hoi An Full Moon Lantern Festival. The ancient city of Hoi An is located about a 30 minute drive outside of Da Nang and every single month they host a lantern festival. It's quite touristy and quite busy but it is totally worth it to go at least once. There'll be vendors lined up all along the river in Hoi An and they'll be selling paper boats with candles inside of them. They'll light the candle for you then you make a wish as you release it into the river. Even if you don't have a candle lit and make a wish, it's still absolutely beautiful to see the entire river lit up with these floating candles. A local bus runs from Da Nang to Hoi An several times an hour during the day and that ride will take you about an hour. The bus fare is less than a dollar and it's a real experience because, well, it's the local bus. While this bus runs frequently back and forth from Da Nang to Hoi An throughout the day, it stops running in the early evening. So if you plan to go down for the Lantern Festival, definitely book some accommodation in advance and plan to stay the night, or you can do what I usually do, which is book a grab back to Da Nang. My second favorite thing to do in Da Nang is to have clothing tailor-made. Having clothing tailor-made is an absolute luxury in most Western countries, but it's just a way of life in Vietnam. There are plenty of tailor shops in Da Nang, but again, this is something I would recommend that you go to Hoi An for. I swear every other shop in Hoi An is a tailor shop. The storefronts have mannequins that are displayed with gorgeous outfits, dresses, and even tuxedos, but they also have books available on display that you can browse through literally hundreds of different outfits that you could have made for you. I also have girlfriends that will go on Lookbook or Pinterest and they'll just pick out any dress, any design that they want, bring that photo to the tailor and have it made. It's honestly amazing what they can do. Once you've decided on what you'd like to have made, you then go and you pick the fabric and the pattern that you'd like. The seamstress will take your measurements and then they will ask for a 50% deposit up front. I've had two dresses made. Both of them came to a total of 15 US dollars and they were both ready within a couple of hours. And for the guys out there, don't dismiss this one. If you have any weddings or funerals or other formal events where you'll need a suit or a tuxedo, this is a great opportunity to have one custom made for you at a fraction of the cost of what it would be in a Western country. Something else I love to do when I'm in Da Nang, which is almost a daily thing, is to enjoy Mai Kei Beach. This beach is one of my favorite in the world. The Da Nang coastline is absolutely spotless. It's a gorgeous, clean beach that stretches on for miles. The water is warm, the waves are gentle, and if you go to the more popular areas, there's also coast guards that will be on duty. The beach is pretty empty during the day, but then fills up with Vietnamese families kind of around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock when they're getting off work, and then on the weekends as well. It can get very busy, and if it does, just walk to the south of Mai Kei Beach and it's probably going to be pretty empty. My absolute favorite way to start the day when I'm living in Da Nang is to jump in the ocean for a quick swim and then take a nice long walk along the beach to the south where it's empty with a good podcast. Love it. My next suggestion also involves Mai Kei Beach. It's to go parasailing. Now, even if you've already been parasailing, I still recommend that you do it here. The views are going to be unlike anything you have ever seen. I went at dusk, so the city was lit up with all the lights of the night, but it was still light enough out where I could see the bridges, the city, and the mountains. I kind of got the best of the day and the night. Another place that you definitely have to check out is Asia Park. Asia Park is this beautiful, clean, state-of-the-art amusement park. But every time I go there, I think it's closed. You pay around 20 US dollars to get in, and then you have access to the entire park and all of the rides. They have music, lights, entertainment on stage, rides running, and no people. The place is empty. It's almost a little bit spooky, but if you can get past that, you get to enjoy the entertainment, the music, and at least five big thrill rides with no wait times. Even if you don't like rides, the park is just beautiful to walk around. Definitely stay into the evening and take the sundial ferris wheel. It's massive and completely enclosed with big windows that give incredible views of the city all lit up at night. A couple other signature popular touristy attractions in Da Nang would be Bana Hills and then Marble Mountains. I'm saying Asia Park over these two and these two are actually not on my list at all. Um, 
I'm not saying don't go to them, some people like them, I just found them to be a little bit too touristy. For example, Bana Hills is known as the Disneyland of Da Nang. A lot of people, quite a bit more expensive, but it is the spot that has that golden bridge with the hands holding it up, so you may still want to check it out. Again, not on this list, but definitely something to consider. Another spot you should definitely check out is the Back Mayan Market. This is my favorite, least touristy local market. You can literally find everything here from suitcases to avocado ice cream to plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. I keep saying least touristy and I'm a tourist, it's such a hypocrite. We're all hypocrites. It's a cool spot to check out and do some people watching even if you aren't intending on buying anything. However, if you do decide to buy something, try to see what the locals are paying because you're probably going to be charged around three times the local price, which you can't do much about, but also know that they are expecting you to negotiate. Also wear closed-toed shoes. The ground is usually wet with various substances. An absolute can't miss, must see is the Dragon Bridge. So it's also called the Santra Bridge and Almost all the time, it's used as a regular bridge for pedestrians walking over or driving over. It's one of the three main ones that connects the beach side to the city side. However, on Friday and Saturday nights at 9 p.m., the bridge is closed down because the dragon's head breathes fire. Yes, you heard that correctly. The bridge breathes fire. I highly recommend you get as close to the head of the dragon as you can. It's located on the beach side of the bridge. There's no tickets, no entrance fee, nothing like that. Just try to show up around 8.30 or earlier so you can get a good spot. It's going to be very busy. A lot of locals will come out with their families for this as well as tourists. I won't tell you what happens after the dragon stops breathing fire because I didn't know it was coming and it was a total surprise and it made it so much better. Don't look it up, just go, you'll love it. Next on the list is to really take time to explore the food scene. Some people say that Vietnamese food is bland and they don't enjoy it that much, but I feel the opposite. It's one of my favorite cuisines around the world. Things are fresh. It's a lot less heavy than, say, the thick curries that you'll find around Thailand. And when I say fresh, I mean fresh. I once tried to order a bowl of chicken soup and I asked for it as a rush order. The server came back, literally holding a live chicken in her hand, and said, not possible. I guess I'm waiting for my chicken soup. <laughs> if you have a quick look on TripAdvisor, you'll see plenty of restaurant recommendations where you can try some of the local dishes. My personal favorite is chicken pho. Pho, so good. If you're on the beach side of Da Nang, which is where I recommend you stay, there's also massive seafood restaurants that are lining the coast, okay? You go and you will pick live your fish or your shellfish and they will cook it right for you there. It's quite an experience and it's absolutely delicious. If you go to a local spot, you'll find the locals sitting there around these tiny little plastic tables, either on these little chairs or these tiny little stools. It's quite funny to see because it's grown men on little stools. It's so random and as a foreigner, it just looks so funny to me. <laughs> there are plenty of beautiful cafes that are set up where you can go curl up, read a book for a few hours or work on your laptop. If you decide you like the local food, another thing to try is doing a cooking class. The ones that are in Da Nang will likely take you to a market first, so you'll get to do shopping with a local and then go back to their kitchen and cook the food and, of course, eat it when you're finished. This next one is an absolute must do. If you do anything on this list, no, do all of them, but this one is amazing. Drive the High Van Pass by motorbike. The High Van Pass is a scenic mountain road that was featured on Top Gear as one of the most beautiful motorbike rides in the world. It's located just outside of Da Nang in the direction of Hue. There are many guides and maps online. If you do plan to drive it, just do a quick Google and you'll be all set. You can rent a motorbike and then self-drive the pass, but do know that it's very hilly, very windy roads. So please, if you're not licensed or you're not an experienced and confident driver, don't try to drive it yourself. This is not the kind of drive you learn to ride a motorbike on. If you're like me and not confident in driving a motorbike on the High Van Pass but still want that experience, I highly recommend you check out a tour service, Easy Riders. A Vietnamese driver will take you on the pass on the back of their motorbike. The driver will pick you up at your hotel, give you a helmet, then you hop on the back, enjoy the pass, as well as a few other stops, a quick break for lunch, and then they will take you back to your hotel at the end of the trip. The whole experience from pick up to drop off lasts about four hours. I've done this two different times and it's great to do with friends as well. You'll all drive together, but each of you on the back of a separate motorbike, of course. 
Even if you have zero experience on a motorbike, I still recommend that you consider taking this trip. My parents came and visited me in Da Nang and my dad was dead set on not taking this trip. He did not want to get on a motorbike. Ended up convincing him. Him and my mom went and when he came back, he was so excited. He loved it so much. The first thing he said to me was, when we get back to Canada, I think I'm going to look into getting my motorbike license. I love my dad. I'd say it's a great trip for anyone that is 14 years or older that can hold on on the back of a bike. The driver is going to be very respectful. They'll go slow for you and it's just a wonderful experience. Last but not least is number 10, which is the perfect end to any day or the beginning of a day or the middle of a day or any time in any day. Massage. Go for a massage. I go for a massage probably three times a week when I'm living in Da Nang. I highly recommend you give four hands a try, which is essentially a Swedish massage that you'd be used to back in a Western country, except they have two therapists working on you at the same time to the rhythm of music. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's a very cool experience. This massage will cost you a little bit more, but the four hands is very famous and it's so worth it. There are spas offering massage on every block in Da Nang, so you'll have plenty to pick from. The problem is that the quality can kind of be a bit of a hit and miss. I did a whole video, which I'll link below, on my favorite spots that were clean and well equipped with beautifully designed rooms, comfortable tables, and wonderful therapists. All of the therapists that I've had speak English and understand if you want stronger, softer, so you can have a massage exactly how you like. It's something I highly recommend and one of the most relaxing things you can do for your brain and for your body. Those are my top 10 favorite things to do in Da Nang, but honestly, there is so much more. If you're considering a trip, either for a short vacation or a long-term stay, I highly recommend it. I'd love to know in the comments down below if you've ever been to Da Nang or if you're planning a trip there. Also happy to answer any questions you may have. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and then subscribe because I would love to see you back here again for another video next week. I'll see you then. Happy travels. Bye.